Hello everyone. Today in this video I'm going to share with you a small technique that I use to test ignition coils. This can be used as a quick test to see if your ignition coil is working fine, still functional. Because most of the time people do resistance checks but uh, sometimes this may not be enough since if the insulation is damaged and all the sparks may be weak and this is not a complete check so you need to check it electrically also. This method can also be used with the modern coil packs. So there is a two pin variant coil pack that looks similar to the older one. So you, it doesn't have an internal trigger circuit. The one that's in front of me as you see in this video, this one has an internal trigger circuit that has a transistor that needs a PWM signal to be activated. So this is controlled by the ECU. It's a three pin variant. There's another four pin variant also. It also works the same way. The only difference is that the, the ground for the trigger signal is separate in the model, but it can be tried to be tested. So it can be grounded common and tested. So this is an old coil that I have with me. So as you can see, there is a positive terminal, there's a negative, and then there's the high voltage secondary. So to check using the resistance method, so what you do is like you need to take a multimeter and uh, dial this to the 200 ohm setting, the lowest one. So you check the resistance across the primary windings. So we put in the 200 ohm settings and we connect it across the positive and the negative terminals and they show the resistance. So you can see it's around 1 ohms. That's the primary winding resistance and then we go to the high voltage side so you need to set it to the 20 kilo ohm resistance mode and then you need to put one probe inside the high voltage terminal which is spark plug and the other one to the, the negative terminal that's this one and this should give around 6 point 9 8 ohms. That's what, most of the time it's around 6 point something to within the 6 to 7 kilo ohm range. It's usually. One thing to be noted is that these old ignition coils they come in two variants. One is the non ballasted model, and another one is the ballasted model. This one has a ballast resistor. You can see the primary winding resistance was 1 ohms, so there's usually a 1 ohm high voltage ballast resistor is connected series with the input of the battery to this one. This is to reduce the power that's going into the ignition coil once the car has started. Usually when the car is in the start position, starter motor is running, the voltage from the battery will drop significantly, it will be around in the 8 to 9 volt range. So during the period it, the battery is connected directly to this without the ballast resistor and once the car is completely running uh, the circuit gets transferred. The current goes through the ballast resistor into the coil to prevent it from being damaged. You may notice that some of these older ones that do not use a ballast resistor the primary resistance might be around you know, 3 to 3.5 ohms so those ones do not have the ballast resistor now coming to the ignition coil packs as I mentioned before um, the 2 pin ignition coil pack it can be measured similar to the the traditional ignition coils over here so it works exactly as like the old one the only difference is a much more smaller form factor. But the ones with the three pin, so as you can see in the picture above or here, these three pins, so we have a ground at the top, to the left we have the ignition hot coming from the battery, that's a 12 volt, it's constantly powered. 
this ground is common for the the trigger as well as the high voltage winding and then we have the signal from the ECU or the trigger signal this is where the pulse width input signal is fed and this would act to switch the transistor on inside the circuit and this would fire the spark so now coming to the testing method so this one is similar to how a traditional ignition system works that use a distributor so the distributor is driven by the camshaft and there are two contact points inside the distributor that opens and closes and this opening and closing will cause the voltage change inside the ignition coil to cause the field to build up and collapse and this increases high voltage into the secondary and to get the spark spark plug so we're going to use the same thing but achieve it using a small DC motor now one thing to remember is uh, all types of DC motors will not work for this method so this one was obtained from a $2 electric shaver so it's a cheap one electric shaver trimmers you can find it the cheap ones so these ones usually have a thicker winding but uh, so I have another one over here so this is the armature of a DC motor so you can see here that the these commutators you can see so the gap between these commutators is quite small in this so these type of motors will not work if you were to open this motor up you can see that the gap between each of the commutator slots it's much larger than this there should be sufficient gap and also the coil the winding should be thick and there should be few windings and also the the brush should be small so the most favorable ones are the smaller carbon brushes or the the copper brush method the ones which do not use carbon brush they work the best so all of the dc motors do not work either so you need to want to look specifically for that also you need to look for a motor that has lower rpms this motor has a less rpm some of those cheap 5 volt dc motors they run at 1200 rpms they are too high and the spark would be very very weak and it's barely noticeable so you need something like this the one from electric trimmer is the one that works the best i've noticed you can find cheap ones from chinese ones they cost only two dollars So this one has to be in series with the negative terminal of the ignition coil. In this case it should be with the trigger circuit. So this has to be, the motor has to be in series with the trigger in this one. And in this case it has to be in series with the negative and which goes to the 12 volt supply. So each time this armature turns it would loose connection with the commutator and this opening and closing would create sparks similar to the distributor this is the older one which I had created so this works almost similar to the distributor so you can see that this is an old film canister so there are slaughtered pieces of copper plates inside this this is soldered outside through a wire that's in parallel across all of this and there is a wire on the other side there is an electric motor with a copper strip attached is soldered to the axle the body of this motor is ground and this is the other one is to run the motor so usually we use a, this has to turn very slowly so i have used a small 1.2 volt battery The wear on this one is going to be much more and this would not last very really long. So I move to the motor method. One thing to remember is you don't want to run the motor for too long. This would heat up the motor faster also and also there will be a lot of sparking or arcing on the 
commutator and the motor would like the motor life would be greatly reduced so keep that in mind so you don't want to run it for more than five six seconds or maybe most 10 15 seconds that's it so i will set up the circuit with the motor first i will give you a demo and then also i will show you how this one works So as you can see I have completed the setup here so the power source will be a small a car battery charger I'll be using this as a 12 volt supply source and uh, so for the wiring I'll give a small brief explanation so we have the as you see in the diagram so we have the, the 12 volt positive coming in this is always hot and uh, this is the negative terminal of the ignition coil so from here one of them goes to the condenser and the other lead of the condenser goes to the high voltage secondary ground and the, the secondary other terminal is connected directly to the spark plug and another lead from the negative terminal goes through the, the motor is similar to like I mentioned similar to the distributor system so this goes through the motor to the negative connection so it's connected inside here so when you power this on you should see the sparks appear here as the motor is spinning so once I power this up There will be a lot of arcing in the community that might get damaged pretty soon, so you don't want to run this for too long. You see the sparks are coming, so this means it's working fine. You may have noticed that I don't, I have not used a ballast resistor. Since we are running it through the motor, this is okay. But, uh, I do not have one ohm resistor with me, this is the smallest I have. 4.12 and um, 43 ohm. If you have a 1 ohm resistor that's around 5 to 10 watts you can put that series with the, the motor and run it through that so this is to to this power yeah the first method which i used to use there's a motor and similar to distribute i mentioned so as the motor turns and touches the, the pieces of copper contacts it will create sparks that is breaking the circuit open and closing it but generally I do not prefer this method because there is a lot of arcing you can see going on inside the, the can and this would greatly reduce the time of the lifetime of the, the device. So I would recommend the motor is a better option. Moreover this technique needs additional batteries and all. You can run it on 12 volts like I showed you before but this would greatly impact the life and probably this would go up immediately within a few minutes because of the huge parking so you need actually a small one volt battery to actually run it very slowly so the motor method is much better so now I have set up the, the connection for the ignition coil pack so the black wire that is coming outside is the common ground for the secondary as well as the primary so you can see it's connected to the negative of the power supply it's at 12 volts so you can see around 13.7 volts you see this will output and uh, this the connection to the the left leftmost side is 12 volt ignition this is always hot and the other side goes for the ecu trigger circuit so what I've done is I've connected through a push button switch and this comes to the motor and from here the motor goes to the negative so from the ECU to the negative 
and uh, from the negative I've taken another wire this goes to the spark plugs negative and this is where the sparks will come so we are going to check this out so we keep it here close by to see the sparks and we will trigger it needs to be much closer so I'm going to show you the sparks it's coming out so when I press this button so now we'll put the spark plug and test it you may have noticed I have removed the rubber boot from the ignition coil. This is because uh, if you're using a wire, it will be quite difficult to see with this, so you have to remove it. If you're using a spark plug straight away, then you don't need to remove this. Also, in older ignition coil packs that's inside a car, it's better not to remove this since this might be quite worn out and this may break apart. So let's press this button and take a look at it. you don't want to run this for too long because you may notice the coil gets heated up quite a lot if you run it continuously that's why I used a switch you don't want to run this for more than 10 seconds thanks for watching hope this helps someone